We are going to light the fuse that Forks didn't and make history. My first mission was to find the original Palace of Westminster, the House of Lords that Fawkes tried to destroy. Approximately along this line here would have been where the House of Lords was. It is, in fact, a car park. It that would. Is disappointing. It's a bit like finding your childhood home has been demolished to make a petrol station. It wasn't the start I'd hoped for, but what Simon did have was a 17th century illustration. I left Simon with the task of unearthing the essential details while I went in search of a place to blow up a building. It's a 21st century electronic warfare range, the busiest in Europe. I felt a bit daft saying I wanted to build a large old medieval hall here, but at least they understood the bit about wanting to blow it up. Having located a safe place to build, the team began marking out the footprint of Fawkes's House of Lords. Simon has done his research and he's come up with absolute gold dust. Original plans made back in the 18th century when they were trying to work out ways of heating the royals, lords and dignitaries in the House of Lords. So they're the perfect blueprint for our construction team to work from. But the old construction drawings revealed two surprises about medieval buildings. Turns out the cellar wasn't a cellar at all. It was called an undercroft, a ground floor storeroom. This was where Guy Fawkes planned to blow his gunpowder. And what's more, the walls of some important buildings back then were not made of just stone, but rubble mixed with mortar. That's solid medieval concrete. For our experiment to be accurate, this undercroft is what we had to recreate. Here at our safely out of the way test site, construction work has finally started. That's lovely. Meanwhile, I've got to go and get hold of some gunpowder. In these unlikely surroundings is explosives maestro Sidney Alford. Amongst other things, Sydney is one of the country's leading bomb disposal experts. Sydney's come up with a rather unusual way to demonstrate one metric tonne of gunpowder. He's rustled up something like it, but thankfully a little less explosive. Right. Um, and that's... We've got to get this much gunpowder. This much gunpowder, yep. Yeah. Sydney revealed that if the grain were gunpowder, I was standing in enough for 100,000 fireworks. That would be a very, very big bang. Better find a broom or something, I suppose. Not sliding it in the second level, I'm not Back on the test site, our House of Lords was now becoming a reality. This is stage two, heavy metal. <laughs> Whilst the framework was taking shape and the construction team rang around for enough concrete, I decided to find out about the man the plotters planned to murder. When Queen Elizabeth I died childless, the crown passed to her distant cousin, King James of Scotland. James I was a contradiction. Some say he was cunning, idle, and the most conceited man on earth. And who might this be? But he was a good father, and for a while he tried to be the master politician, keeping both Protestants and Catholics happy. But in time, he would be forced by the rich Protestants who funded the royal purse to denounce the Catholics. And so he wrote a speech which was to outrage the plotters. For Catholics like Robert Catesby, the King's speech meant more than just persecution. There was talk of excommunicating all of them. They wouldn't be able to marry, own property or leave wills. There'd be no protection from the law. The state wouldn't even recognise their existence. It was a living death. Drastic times called for drastic measures. And only one solution remains. Deliver the king back to hell. So the plot was hatched and the countdown to annihilate parliament had begun. Oh boy. I've just had a very interesting telephone conversation with Sydney. He's very pleased with his gunpowder experiments. They've gone very well so far. It's getting hold of the stuff. A little bit of it, the fireworks, easy. A metric tonne of gunpowder, big problem, huge. And that's bad, because no gunpowder, 
no experiment. With a shortage of concrete in Cumbria and no gunpowder in the UK, things are not looking too good right now. But Sydney, at least for one, is not letting it get him down because he says he's had a great idea. Sydney widened his search for gunpowder and got wind of a factory in Spain. Thorough as always, he needed to visit it to check the quality of the ingredients to ensure our experiment stayed authentic. For Guy Fawkes, getting his gunpowder was relatively easy. At the start of the 1600s, there was lots on the black market. Because of strict controls on transporting explosives in the UK, we weren't allowed to know any more about how the gunpowder would reach our test site. All we were told was that it would turn up first thing on the day of our explosion. But at least we'd found our 17th century gunpowder, and back at base, things were also looking up. For us, unlike Forks, the effects of gunpowder in barrels were a big unknown. Now, here's the problem. No one has used gunpowder for really big bangs since the Victorians. Modern explosives are much, much more powerful, and gunpowder went out of fashion years ago. But to be safe when we do our big blow, we need to know just how powerful gunpowder is. This was the first time anyone had ever exploded a full barrel of gunpowder and measured the effect. On site, we couldn't be sure about exactly what was happening, so the test numbers were sent away to a blast prediction expert. It was time to do some serious calculations. From the number crunching, it was immediately clear that the barrel itself played a significant part in the destructive power of the blast. Gunpowder, on its own, doesn't explode. It burns. So, it starts here, it burns, and it burns through a length of time, and then at the end, it's all gone. But if you contain the gunpowder in something like a barrel, then it starts to burn here, but the barrel holds, and it burns for longer, and it's still holding all that energy in, and then, blam! At the end, it all lets go in one huge explosion. You've turned your burn into an explosion. Everything near the blast zone was at risk, and we would need to be stationed over half a mile away to be safe. With such an enormous blast, there's a question that now springs to mind had the fuse been lit in 1605. With the undercroft complete, it's time for the roof and upper walls. As we saw in our blast prediction, they won't be critical to the effects of the explosion, but we are putting them up for authenticity. There'll be a large explosion at the Advanta car test site for the next five minutes. All aircraft are to avoid. Stand by for broadcast. Stand by for broadcast. There'll be a large explosion within the next three minutes. 650 tons of concrete. One ton of gunpowder. One building. And one very very big experiment. At last, we were about to find out what would have happened if Guy Fawkes had lit his gunpowder 400 years ago. Would his murderous plot have worked? Well, the exclusion zone is in place. We're all here waiting. The building is there with the gunpowder. The weather is with us. It's time to do it. Roger, as soon as you're ready. Go 6 0 to gas, go 6 3. Countdown's beginning
What do you think? Killed it. That. That was big. <laughs> I that like was. They don't make like them like that anymore. Nothing in the breeze. No, I wish we could smell it. Yes, look, look, look. Yeah, See yeah, that debris? Yeah. The debris still coming down. No. That but. was much bigger than I expected. Really? <laughs> it's still coming down. Terribly got oh it's all that It's strange. I know it was an experiment, we know it wasn't for real in one sense, it was a real explosion. It's, it does feel gruesome. It really does. Having seen that and being amazed and surprised by the ferocity of it and the extent of the destruction, I don't think there's any doubt. If Guy Fawkes had lit that fuse, he would have changed the course of history. Now that the dust has settled, I've come back to Westminster to answer the question I began with. Would the gunpowder plot have worked? Well, the answer is a very big Yes, obviously. Nobody in the House of Lords that day would have survived. Even our blast gauges that we put in there to measure the power of the explosion didn't make it. They went right off the scale and then expired. One last thought. This is the largest rocket you can buy in the shop. It's got 50 grams of gunpowder in it. Guy Fawkes had 20,000 times this much for his November the 5th fireworks. The irony is, we light these to mark a blast that never happened. Sorry, London. <laughs> <laughs>